Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing a sort of big roundup video with some questions that I'm going to be answering from you guys that you've been sending in over the past week or so. So if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year and into next year. So please be sure to share the channel around. That is a really important thing because we're trying to reach 100k and we are so goddamn close. It's literally like trying to crawl slowly in like an action film over like the finish line if you've seen like cool runnings or something. So that would be really appreciated to all of you guys who are subscribed, all of you guys who are new, share it around, tell everyone who watches the DC TV shows about the channel. So after you watch this video, leave your new questions and other theories in the comments down below because I want to make some more videos a bit like this, sort of Q&A style, but more conversational than traditional Q&A, more like a normal video. So I will be doing that because there's not that much news in the break. We're on a break and we don't return till January 14th and it's currently the 21st. So we still got about ooh, nearly four weeks, you know, three to four weeks until we get an episode which is going to be two episodes of crisis which is obviously a lot to look forward to and i can't wait but for now we're going to still be making videos but without further ado let's go ahead and get into these questions okay so the first question is coming from hi hi that is the username on twitter and they ask is oliver still going to die in crisis so this is obviously a big question that we've had and oliver obviously died in episode one of crisis and that was a big shock, it happened really fast, and I think it was effective, but I don't think it's the best way they could have done it. I think they could have prolonged it longer. And it's been a bit weird in the next two episodes after. We've had Oliver being revived, so they've retconned that already, and now he's like the Spectre, so obviously we don't know if he's actually going to die. I don't believe he's going to die, but I think there is a high possibility that he ends up actually, you know, going kaput after all. So we'll just have to wait and see, but I think it's a high possibility, but I wouldn't bet on it. Okay, so Christina Perry asks, will Oliver become the Spectre? And the clear answer to that is yes. That is what I believe happened at the end of last episode when we saw Oliver go off with the Spectre. And that is the reason why Oliver's going to return next episode. This is obviously the Arrow episode, the next one. So, of course, he's going to be in it. But how is he going to be in it? I think he's going to be playing that Spectre role that we've talked about and theorized about. Okay, so the next question comes from Junha Singh. And he asks, hey, DC TV show. The question is, will there be another crossover? He hopes for Darkseid or even Swamp Thing. A lot of big villains introduced in DC Rebirth. Okay, so of course there is going to be another crossover. I believe they've already mentioned that. I think Mark Pedowitz mentioned that, or it was either him or Greg Berlanti. But they've definitely talked about it. And yeah, they're going to continue even past Crisis, which is supposed to be like their crossover to end all crossovers. It is in the comics. In the TV show, it's obviously massive. They've destroyed all the Earths and everything like that. But I think they can actually go bigger than this, really, in the scope of things, in further crossovers. And in regards to Darkseid or Swamp Thing, don't think either of them are going to happen. Darkseid is way too big, and obviously there were originally plans to include him in the Justice League film. And I think there's probably plans in the future to bring him into the actual DC Films universe. So I wouldn't count on it because he's one of the biggest villains out there. Okay, so the next question comes from Arya, and Arya asks, how slash from whom did you learn about the Arrowverse? Okay, so this isn't like about like a proper topic, this is more to do with me, but I thought I would include it in this video, because it is sort of a Q&A after all. So, how I found the Arrowverse. So, basically back in like, oh, when was it, like 2013, 2012? I used to watch all the DC animated stuff, and obviously I'd seen the films and stuff like that. I was obsessed with The Dark Knight, Batman Begins, The Dark Knight Rises, all of that. But it was really watching the DC animated stuff, like I'd watched all the films, I'd seen all the Batman animated series, the Superman animated series, the Justice League animated series, and that was the way that I found out about Arrow and The Flash. Through that, and by the way, at this point, Supergirl wasn't a thing. 
and I believe The Flash was just starting when I found out about Arrow and stuff like that, so I think it was like Arrow season 1 or 2, and I didn't watch it for a while because I was so obsessed with the animated shows that I was like, if they do this Green Arrow live action version, I will not like it at all. Same with The Flash, because I was obsessed with the animated stuff. But eventually, after I ran out of everything to watch, like I had rewatched Batman the Animated Series a bunch of times, Justice League the Animated Series, Superman the Animated Series, and all the films, after a while, I just sort of gave up and I was like, okay, we're gonna give this a try. And I think it was at the end of The Flash Season 1, and sort of at the beginning of The Flash Season 2, when I started watching The Flash, and then shortly after, I started watching Arrow after I caught up on The Flash, and I just instantly became obsessed, and then eventually we reached, I believe it was 2015, and it was towards the end of the year, and then I found out that a new DC show was coming, and this is about maybe like a year after I first started watching The Flash, or, you know, sometime around that season I started watching The Flash and Arrow, and then... I saw the Supergirl show and I was like, oh, I'm going to give this a go. I watched it and I've been watching it ever since and so that's sort of how it began for me. Okay, so let's move on to another question. Okay, so Monroe McLaren asks, do you think Kara will almost or potentially die? But she could definitely come back. Okay, so I think that Kara could potentially die. Mark Guggenheim has been teasing there's going to be a very similar homage to Crisis in that if you remember or if you've read Crisis, there is one frame in the book where you actually see Supergirl, she's dead, and she's in the arms of Superman. So that's obviously a hint, and I think there's a possibility that she dies, and that I obviously think there is going to be some rewriting of reality, so that's always a possibility that Supergirl could die and she could come back, like all these Earths are going to come back. I don't know, you know, if anything's going to stay permanent or not, but I think there's a possibility that Supergirl could die. Okay, so Mumro asks again, how different do you see the Supergirl characters after Crisis? Do you think some of Supergirl's show history will be erased or retconned? So... I don't know how it's all gonna go down, just to tell you guys, so we'll have to wait and see as to how they resolve Crisis and how they get these Earths back, because currently right now there is no Earths, there is nothing to go back to, and all the Supergirl characters are dead, bar Supergirl and Jean. So I think it's obviously going to have an impact on them, but considering how disconnected the Supergirl showrunners were to Crisis before Crisis. I don't think there's going to be that much difference, if I'm completely honest, because I don't think they care as much about Crisis as the Arrow or the Flash showrunners. And that's just me telling the honest truth, but obviously there's going to be some differences. I don't know, maybe it'll just be some small things, but I don't think it's going to be anything too big. Okay, so Liam Lucas asks, what new show are you looking forward to the most, and what current Arrowverse show are you looking forward to the most post-Crisis? Okay, so new show, I have to catch up on a lot of the current shows right now, like I'm behind on Krypton, Titans, and stuff like that. But the new show that I'm most looking forward to, I think would have to be the Green Lantern show that's coming, because I'm a massive Green Lantern fan. I remember watching Justice League and there was the Green Lantern that popped up and I literally screamed in the cinema. That's how much of a Green Lantern fan I am. But I think Stargirl looks intriguing, but I'm not 100% convinced on that yet. I'll have to see more, but I think it looks pretty interesting. But it would be Green Lantern that I'm most looking forward to. And in regards to Arrowverse shows after Crisis is definitely The Flash considering that we're having a whole new villain and I can't wait to see who it is. I'm really, really praying for a speedster villain like Godspeed or Red Death. That's just what I want to see. Okay, so let's move on to some of the final questions in this Q&A video. So, The Magic Vortex asks, do you think that Brainiac will be in Crisis or Dark Side? So, quite simply, no. Obviously, it would make sense if we have, you know, some Legion stuff going on, we've had the Legion ship and stuff like that, that Brainiac could show up, but no, it's not gonna happen then, Dark Side's not gonna happen either. Okay, so that is about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment, subscribe, and turn on those notifications. And I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.
Icy Road.